How to cook a full English breakfast by Alistair. First find a lovely ripe clementine or orange and peel it any way you like. Once you've got your freshly peeled orange, squeeze it gently but firmly but also gently into a glass. Try and get as much of the orange juice out as you can. Don't worry about any bits of orange peel or pulp going in. A lot of people like pulp. There you go, you've got your orange juice. Mmm, it tastes so lovely and fresh. Next you want to get some baked beans. Find a can, usually from the fridge, and start preparing them. Now find a sausage if you like that kind of thing, and put it on a plate. And cook it just the way you like. Next up it's time to do the egg. Fried egg is a big part of a full English breakfast or an omelette, so get hold of an egg by any means necessary. A roaring flame. Take the egg and put it on top of the heat. While that's cooking, take a chopping board and find some lovely fresh British tomatoes. I rather like the small plum or cherry tomatoes. Then find a suitably sized knife and start chopping them into slices. Mmm. Watch those fingers. Next up, if you like hash browns, grab one or two and put it in the toasting machine until it's lovely and crispy brown. Now, if you're really hungry, you might want some buttered bread as well. So, grab two slices of bread and put them on a baking tray. Now grab the baking tray, put it into a preheated oven until they are lovely and toasted. There's not much simpler way to make toast out there and it can really make a full English breakfast complete. Once they're done, take them out of the oven to cool. It's time to check on your hash browns. Toasty! Now for the bacon. Everyone knows how to cook bacon though, so take two slices of bacon and cook it as shown. It's time to assemble the finished product. Get a plate and put all the baked beans on top. Next up, remove the rashes of bacon from the toaster and put them on along with the hash brown and, careful now, don't burn yourself, the omelette. Lastly, the sausage should be done by now as well, so you can take it and put it on the plate. Voila! Beautiful. Combine it with a glass of orange juice and you have a very filling, very tasty full English breakfast. Thanks for watching, folks. How to cook a lovely cheesecake by Alistair. First, find yourself a baking tin or tray and get some baking paper. Neatly put the paper inside to line the edges and stop things from sticking and get some digestive biscuits. Carefully break them down into small pieces with a rolling pin and find an egg. To make the biscuit base, you're going to want to get some butter from the fridge or an alternative, along with the cream cheese and some sour cream. Measure out the amount of butter that you need on the weighing scales. Now put the butter into the mixing container, as demonstrated and then melt it in the microwave until it's melted. Very melted. Once it's melted, you want to add the crushed fine biscuit crumbs and mix them together finely using any tool that you can find. Now push that firmly into the tin. Push it down with the back of a spoon so it's nice and flat and pop it into the oven, preferably a preheated one that comes with heat already in it. Next up, you want to make the mixture for the cheesecake itself. Now get a large mixing bowl and weigh out the amount of sugar that you need for the cheesecake. Lovely. Next up, get the cream cheese and use a knife to empty it out in one lovely big juicy dollop into the mixing container as shown in the picture on your screen. Next up, assemble the electric mixer like this and carefully mix it together. Now add the sour cream into the mix. 
Once that's been added to the mixture, add some flour. And after that, you want to take the biscuit base out of the oven, which should be nice and firm by now. Next up, you want those eggs. Add the eggs one by one into the mixture as shown. Now, you want to mix that all together very, very nicely with the electric mixer. And then finally, if you want some flavor, add some lemon juice or, or orange juice, or this was lemon curd yogurt. Next up, put it all into a rice cooker like this. Then put it on top of the biscuit base in the baking tin that you've prepared. You can use one of these spatulas to make sure you get it all out and then carefully put it into the oven that's still preheated. Now you can grab anything like chocolate or any other toppings in the meantime. After 10 minutes, check on the cheesecake in the oven. The top should have gone slightly brown or dark yellow to indicate that it's cooking nicely. Then start preparing your chocolate using a pair of tongs. Now, after about 45 minutes, you want to check on your cheesecake. It should now be firm, so if you, uh, you tilt it, it won't kind of dribble down one side. Then you can start decorating the top with any kind of a jelly or chocolate or whatever else you want, and you can start to serve it. It should look absolutely lovely, as you can see. The perfect shape for any cheesecake. Absolutely scrumptious. How to make some lovely pan au chocolat. Begin by measuring out some flour into a bowl, and then into a bigger bowl if the first bowl wasn't big enough. Then measure out the milk and pour it in on top. After that, pour in the water as well, carefully. Then get some sugar and pour that in as well. And then get yourself some yeast from a sachet. Sachet? A sachet. Then add some spoons of butter, like you can see, then mix it with your hands, your fists. Knead it beautifully. Knead it like a beach needs seagulls. Pummel it. Shape it neatly until it is a ball. Once it's a ball, wrap it in cling film to keep it, I don't know, moist, I think. Once it's a cling filmed ball of pure dough, put it into your refrigerator. Like that. There, yep. Right, okay. Once that's done, you can measure out the butter like this. There may be better ways of doing this, but this is how I do it. Anyway, once you've got the right amount, soften it by beating it slightly, and then roll it out in between two sheets of uh, baking paper. Measure it so it's about 7x7 seven seven inches like this. Then put that also into your refrigerator, like so. After an hour, sprinkle out some flour on the surface and roll it out nice and square like this. Try and get it even, all the corners, you know? Then put the butter on top like this and fold it in from the left and the right side to make it into a kind of Christmas present of fat, basically. Then put that in the refrigerator too. Take it out after an hour or so and uh, turn it into a kind of taco made out of dough put it back in the fridge. Once again, you roll the dough out sideways like this, and then you fold it in on itself, kind of like a Christmas present. And then you want to put that in the fridge and leave it in there overnight. After that, take it out of the cling film, sprinkle some flour on the surface and roll it out. You cut it into a square with a knife like this, Get rid of the, uh, the side bits, and then divide it into rectangle shapes. Then get some chocolate and melt it. Pour the melted chocolate like this, and let it set, and then you get four little bars like this. Do it as many times as you need, and then put the chocolate onto each end of the rectangle shapes of the pan au chocolat. And then gently roll each one up like this into a beautiful little roll. Then you're going to need an egg, so go and get an egg from somewhere and then uh, crack the egg into a bowl, then beat the egg however you normally would, and then kind of baste the egg on top of the pan au chocolat rolls like this. 
and this time put them somewhere warm so that the dough can rise. After an hour or so, baste them again with the remaining egg and put them in the oven. When they're done cooking, they should be beautiful golden brown on top like this. And there you have it, you've made some beautiful panna chocolate. They should look just like this.